Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bethany, if you're new here, and today we're gonna plan my June TBR. So I'm actually going to do like a big pile of possibilities for June. I do have a theme in mind for my June, um, but I don't have anything major planned and I want to leave it really relaxed and open so that I can mood read um, or change it up if I want to. So my June theme is going to focus on series books that I own and need to continue, um, which I didn't have as many as I thought I did. So there's not a huge stack there. So I'm also going to be focusing on um, repeat authors. So authors that I've really loved and that I own more of their books or that I have um, their books on NetGalley that I wanna get to. So I have quite a few of those. So that's why this is a pile of possibilities. I will not be getting to all of these, but I wanted to kind of share what I have um, and kind of my thoughts and ideas behind that. Okay, so we're going to start with this series. So the first one for that list is For a Lifetime by Gabrielle Meyer. I just read her second book in this Timeless series um, just in May, and it's so good. The first one was so good. I can't believe it took me so long to read the second one. So I want to just keep moving and go ahead and get into this one. I've heard nothing but good things about this one as always. So I'm um, looking forward to this. This is historical fiction, time travel. I don't remember the times in this book, but I definitely recommend starting the series if you haven't yet. This is Christian historical time travel. I don't think I said the Christian part. Most of you probably know that. Um, okay, then the next one is Love and the Silver Lining by Tammy L. Gray. So this is the second book in the State of Grace. Yes, the State of Grace um, series. I read the first book last year and really, really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was just a really good contemporary romance with a lot of depth and... Um, I liked it a lot, so I want to continue on in this series. I do have book three, so I could potentially move on this month um, if I just want to like continue. Okay, and the last one is Terry Blackstock's If I'm Found. So this is the second book in this trilogy, and I don't own the third one yet. And I read the first one, If I Run, last year. And I feel like I might need to reread that before I start this one because I know that they like, they move quickly and together and I feel like I might be a little bit lost if I don't remember all the details from the first one. So I'm considering rereading that one. Um, I also might wait on this one because I don't know if Lauren has read it yet. I know that she read the first one not too long ago and we had like maybe talked about buddy reading. So Lauren, if you're watching this and you still haven't read this one, let me know. We'll need to chat about that. I also think I need to go ahead and get book three and just read them all together whenever I decide to get back into this series. Okay, that's all for the series. Um, the other, the only other one that I had thought about maybe getting back into is the Inheritance Games. I don't have the physical books because they're in my daughter's room and she's not up yet. <laughs> so, um, but I have only read book one in that series. She has read the entire thing and really liked it. Um, I'm just not super in the mood for that right now. So maybe later in the month I will be. Um, so that's always an option for books that I have going in a series. So, okay, next we're going to move on to just authors that I want to read more from and that I have more books from. So, where should we start? Okay, <laughs> 
So um, I have Where the Road Bends by Rachel Fordham. This is a priority for the month. Um, I am planning on buddy reading this with Keisha later in the month. Um, and so I've really enjoyed The Letter Tree by Rachel Fordham. And I actually have another book of hers on my list in this video that we'll get to later. So this is Christian Historical Fiction. It's Iowa 1880. Um, and yeah, I don't remember much else about it. <laughs> so, but uh, I really enjoyed her writing in the letter tree. So I'm looking forward to trying this one out. And I'm looking forward to buddy reading with Keisha. The next one I have is The All-American by Susie Finkbeiner. I just talked about this in my last video. Um, I have read All Manner of Things by her and enjoyed it and want to read more of her books. I actually think I own another one that I'm saving for later in the year. Um, but this one I really have been wanting to get to. So I'm putting this on my pile of possibilities. Um, this is a also um, a Christian historical fiction. Next is Cherished by Kim Cash Tate. I read Faithful by Kim Cash Tate last year and it was really good. Um, some really good faith content in that book. Um, good friendship and fellowship and her other book tackled a lot of hard topics and it sounds like this one is also going to. I think there's a little bit of infidelity. I thought Faithful handled it really well and so I have a feeling this one um, is going to also deal with that well. So um, yeah. I'm looking forward to reading another book by her. Christian Contemporary. Am I saying anything that's relevant? I don't know. Next is What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson. This is a Christian, I think it's contemporary. I know it's like a mystery. I think it's like podcast related which I know is kind of like a popular sub-genre of thrillers and mysteries right now. So um, I don't remember much else than that. <laughs> so I think somebody goes missing. We're probably going back in time a little bit. I feel like in the other book I read by her, uh, we did jump around in timelines. So that's probably going to happen here. Um, but I don't know much else about it other than that. Okay, the next one is One Thing I Know by Kara Isaac. Um, so I read a book of hers last year. It, the name is not always easy for me to remember. I'm going to put a picture up. Then there was you, maybe? Um, anyway, so I'm actually... I started re-listening to it this year just because I couldn't figure out what to read and I needed like a palate cleanser or like just a comfort and that book even though it didn't make my top books of the year for 2023 um I'm kind of surprised it didn't because when I think about it like I just really really enjoyed that book so that's why I decided to try to reread it um I did kind of pause it because I got busy reading other things, but I would like to reread that one and then I would also like to read more from her. She writes Christian Contemporary and I don't know anything about this other than it's by her. All right, the next one that I have is actually one I have checked out from the library and that is Catherine Center's The Lost Husband. Um, I want to read Catherine Center to zero this year, so since I'm doing like a whole month of repeat authors. I thought I would go ahead and add this one to the list just in case. Um, this one I know follows a woman who is a widow with young children and I think she goes to like stay with an aunt like on a farm in Texas. Overall I've really enjoyed Catherine Center's writing and so I want to like check out some of her backlist and see how I feel about this one. For the last book on my list, it's actually a new to me author and um, it's the only one for this whole pile, <laughs> but um, this is going to be my read like a booktube friend for the month. So I've been choosing one 
um, of like the booktubers that I watch a lot and looking at their videos for their favorites from last year and just choosing one of the books from that list. Um, preferably one that I already own and that is the case here. So I'm going to be reading like Oshina this month. Um, so I watched her video, her favorites from last year and so many of her favorites are books I want to read or books I have read. So it was kind of hard to choose and actually Oh, did you hear that thunder? That's why my lighting isn't fantastic right now. Um, it's actually better than I thought it would be though. But um, yes, so what was I saying? Oh, Where the Road Bends was on Oshina's list. So that would count, but since I don't know exactly when I'm getting to that one with Keisha, I decided to pick another read like Oshina book and that is Tony Shiloh's The Love Script. I can't believe I haven't read anything by Tony Shiloh yet um, and I think I pre-ordered this and I didn't realize until I opened it today to get ready for this video that it's signed and it has like a bookmark and a sticker in it so that's wonderful um, and I have heard such good things about Tony Shiloh about the faith content in her books. This is a um, a contemporary Christian romance um, about I think he is famous and there's some fake dating but like fake dating done really well um, according to most people so I don't know why I haven't read anything by Tony Shiloh and I have a feeling that once I do read this she's gonna be like in this group of authors that I want to continue reading from so that's why I chose this one for my Read Like Oshina book for the month of June. Okay, I almost forgot to include these, but this is a pretty high priority for my June TBR, and that is the NetGalley books I have by authors that I've already read and enjoyed. So I have four of those. I re just recently started on NetGalley because I had kind of been putting it off, and there were a couple of reasons for that. One is that I did not have an e-reader and I did not e-read but I did get a kindle so that kind of solved that problem and then I don't want to get overwhelmed with things I have to read basically or feel like I have to read so I told myself only request you know authors that you feel comfortable with books that you really really want to read and so I did that for the most part um I do have a few exceptions because I want to try new things but um anyway I felt like I was not requesting too many and I also didn't know if I would be approved for all of them. <laughs> so yesterday I had a bunch of approvals come in so uh, yeah I thought I would go ahead and add those to my list because I have four of them that are repeat authors for me and so I want to focus on those in June. Um, so these are going to be kind of high priority um, for my June TBR. So those are Between the Sound and Sea by Amanda Cox. I don't know anything about the what this is about, but um, Amanda Cox is one of my favorite authors, so I'm very, very excited to get to read this early. Um, the other one is Chloe. I cannot talk this morning. Cole and Layla are just friends by Bethany Turner. Um, so I did DNF Brennan Sebastian, which I think this might be a series or maybe not. Maybe they just look similar or companion. I don't think it's going to be an issue for me to read this one without finishing the other one. So hopefully not. Um, it does sound better to me <laughs> because um, they're friends and so yeah. I've also enjoyed Bethany Turner's writing in the past, so I want to read, I want to continue reading her books even though I DNF'd Brandon Sebastian. Um, okay, next is Beyond Ivy Walls by Rachel Fordham. So this is another Rachel Fordham book for the month, um, and it looks really good. I think, is this the one that was Beauty and the Beast related? I don't know. It's historical, Christian, and yeah. 
I'm sorry if you were here for synopsis today. This has been very disappointing and I am so sorry. Um, okay, the last one is The Summer of Yes by Courtney Walsh. So I just read um, My Phony Valentine in May by Courtney Walsh and really enjoyed it and also just enjoy following her on Instagram and her um, just her outlook on how she writes romance. I really appreciate that and so I'm looking forward to reading more of her books. I am excited to just read from some authors that I've already enjoyed and I just feel like it's gonna be a good month because of that. Let me know what your plans are in June, what you're going to be reading, um, if you've read these authors, what you've thought about them, or these books. I will chat with you soon. Bye!